So here's going to be a little document of my 350 uh, kilovolt Vanegraaff generator. And this is a fairly high uh, current Vanegraaff generator. It runs with the three inch wide ruler. Uh, and these things push it probably close to around 3,000, 4,000 RPM in the use of 5,000 to 7,000 RPM motor. Um, the newer motors will be pushing out closer to six to seven giving it a little bit of a higher rpm in the end after drags considered so anyways what i want to do is just give you a quick rundown on uh, how these are assembled i hope that this model uh, builds fairly quickly uh, looking at everything said and finished these take me probably about an hour and a half to put together but it also depends on i guess how savvy you are in the workshop too so to start this out the very bottom of the generator you guys see got these rubber feet i connected these guys just using uh, uh, gorilla glue, uh, Gorilla Super Glue that is, and it has to be Gorilla Super Glue. That's definitely the best super glue on the market. Uh, but you're going to see whenever you get them, there are uh, some machine screws on the very machine screw holes on the on the bottom, and you can uh, take out these little copper inserts, and you can insert the five eighths uh, machine screws into them, and the screws will actually self tap into the hole. It's going to be a tight fit. Uh, just make sure you don't over tighten them, otherwise it will uh, strip the hole. The next part is going to be connecting the tower and whenever you receive this there's going to be a piece of film over the top of it so you can write all over it and make some marks and whatnot and of course all the holes are going to be pre-drilled for you within the base. But you are going to have to set the holes on the side of the acrylic here. So the way that this is going to be done is you have to find the correct angle that the acrylic tubing will have to sit and if this video will pick it up there's going to be a little line right there and this line is going to match a line that you will have to draw going directly across the acrylic that runs parallel with this edge. Now that line sits three and a half inches down and you'll see it in the instructions on uh, the exact uh, location in the whole nine yards. But you're going to take a pen with the film of course still on the acrylic. You don't want to draw on the acrylic and you're going to first mark that line and you will place the acrylic down on it and then you will attach these little brackets and you want to make sure that they're facing out like this otherwise it's going to be uh, a little bit too short and they won't quite reach and uh, the next thing you'll have to do is just mark the hole locations of where these screws need to be and it has to be done like that because each one of these little brackets comes just a little bit off so if I were to drill the holes for you uh, you know according to the the stamps that I have uh, each one you know it's there's going to be too much of a variance so that's how that works out now for connecting everything the motor is connected on the bottom using uh, some smaller metric screws and you can see these ones if the camera will pick it up there's some spacers in there because you don't want the screws going too much and into the motor for the wire support this is just a very small 5 8 uh, metro or a 5 8 uh, machine screw and that holds in this little aluminum uh, wire holder which just bends over the wire that's connected to the motor now this motor I had to wire to a separate plug uh, but the motors are being that I will now be using this the plugs already going to be uh, placed into the wiring system so you won't have to do that the part of the wire that's going to pull the electrons from the ground you can see the very end of it is connected to a little alligator clip and then I have it connected right here using a larger quarter inch bolt with a fairly large uh, fender washer and then the wire just wraps up through here and you're going to see there's a little notch right there um, and then it connects to the very bottom brace the little aluminum brace the aluminum brace will have to be hand bent and you can just do that with the needle nose plier and you can see on the other side I have another fender washer that holds the brass comb onto the uh, onto the brace where on the other side we have our wing nut the camera will pick it up we have the wing nut and we have the little blue wire connector so that it holds it on there for you Let's see if I can get this to focus in and you can see how that goes now while we're down here, I might as well just explain one quick thing about the combs. The combs do not touch the belt and they sit probably about a quarter inch away, though the closer the better. And the one thing about the comb is you're gonna to want to have to you're gonna to want to peel 
one of the little strips off of the brass so that the comb will have little nubs that are pointing up to the belt. If it doesn't point, it won't be able to produce a little eye on jet, so you want to make sure you do have that pointed in. Alright, just a few more things here while we're looking at the bottom. Uh, you can see the uh, motor is going to have a pulley that connects to it, and this is going to require a fairly small uh, uh, oh gosh, Allen wrench and going up to the top there's going to be another pulley that requires the, the same Allen wrench for the roller there we are I have a wool felt and the way that I hold the wool felt on is I just wrap it with some nylon string and you can use a super glue to hold the nylon and to fasten it on actually what I do is I tie it on one end and I wrap it quite a few times there and I get to the other side I will wrap it quite a few times and I'll, cut, I'll catch the end of it on fire using just a small lighter that's the, the nylon string and I'll let it melt and I'll finally smush it into the rest and that gives me a pretty good permanent hole.